We've been fixing a lot of leaks on the TT as of late. Injectors, intake manifold, and a completely destroyed PCV, to name a few. The car is coming together, but after changing the oil, we noticed a bit of sludge. The oil itself was fine, but we've got to fix the moisture issue. So, I think it's time we give this car some added protection. So how do we fix our moisture issue? Well, I think there's actually two problems at hand. Where the moisture is coming from could very well just be the weather, but for now, that's the least of our concern. The big issue is that oily, watery grime is being routed directly back into our turbo inlet pipe. Into the intake. Water getting into your intake path isn't exactly a good thing, nor do I want to simply recirculate that grime. If only there was a way to catch it before it got that far. This is a 034 Motorsports oil catch can kit for the 1.8T. Pretty big issue though. This is not built for this car. This kit's actually made for a Jetta, a GTI, or a 180 horsepower TT, which have completely different routing for their vacuum lines. So we're gonna have to do a bit of modification and potentially change some things up to get it to actually work with the 225. The cars that this kit was actually designed for share the 1.8T engine, but the layout couldn't be more different. The direction the boost flows in the car is almost entirely reversed, so there is absolutely zero guarantee that this kit is going to fit this car. The theory of what a catch can does, however, will stay the same. We're simply gonna take the principles that make this kit work on a standard 1.8 and adapt it slightly so that it works for the 225. I have no guarantee this is gonna work. This is simply an experiment and something I wanted to try. But that brings me to a pretty obvious question. Why didn't I buy a kit for the 225? Pretty simple answer. Stateside, those don't exist anymore. This car is in an interesting position. In the States, not a lot of people modify these anymore. So the 225 specific kits are slowly being phased out of the market. It's a bummer, but it makes sense from a business standpoint. All it does is give us a chance to be a bit more creative. At this point, this adaptation is a hypothesis. So let's talk about my game plan. First and foremost, there's a couple ways you can route a catch can. There are some kids and people online who say you should delete the entire PCV system and simply replace it all with a catch can. Well, every part of my PCV is now brand new, and I don't really see the need to eliminate a system that was A, put there for a reason, and B, working just fine. In engineering, there's this concept of redundancy. Two different systems preventing the same issue is a lot better than one system preventing that issue. This brings me to my approach. I want to make an inline catch can in addition to the PCV system. We're going to intercept the oily sludge mixture as it leaves the valve cover here. Here, it splits into two routes. One that goes down to the PCV, which is fine. We're not going to touch that. We want to intercept the other outlet, the one that goes through this pancake valve and back into the turbo inlet pipe, because our goal is for that mixture not to go through the intake system. So that's how we're going to mock everything up. It'll make more sense when we start playing with fitment, but for now, let's take off this triple exit hose. Something I want to point out real quick. As you see me take this off, look at how much water drains out of that. That is going directly into the turbo, and it is precisely what we don't want. It's also a good sign that putting a catch can right here might actually do something. This pancake valve was completely filled with grime, and consequently, this hose was full of water and oily sludge. And that also means so was the turbo inlet pipe. I almost want to take the whole tip off just to get all that out of there. No idea where it's coming from. Definitely this is a good place to put the catch can, because even the PCV is missing a lot of stuff. For the time being, I did my best to scrape it out. If we get the catch can to fit, I'll pull the bottom of the turbo inlet pipe off and make sure we have none left. But first, we need to see if this idea is actually gonna work. Since the kit was designed for a 1.8, the main benefit is it has a triple exit hose designed to go to a catch can. So connecting the valve cover, the PCV, and the intake won't be the issue. 
The issue is where that hose is routed doesn't make any sense for this car, given how the tip is in a completely different spot than the other 1.8T variants. A good long while of me testing this out was really playing with different hose combinations and routing to see what would actually work. Like I said, the only install guide for this is for a completely different car, so it was really a matter of picking and choosing what parts of that would be applicable to this build and what I would need to come up with myself. There was, however, one breakthrough from the GTI guide, which made a lot of sense with this car, and it had to do with where we were going to mount the catch cam. Before I read this, I had been struggling with finding a place for it to sit without impacting the fitment of the intake. Here was the breakthrough, and it's pretty simple. While this is technically a Mark 1 TT, it is also a Mark IV platform, and that means they share some similarities. One of which being this relay box right here. For a GTI, the instructions say to dismantle the cover for this and slide it into the firewall. That gives you enough clearance to mount the catch can to the car. Turns out those same mounting brackets are on the Mark I TT, and this location is actually perfectly valid for the catch can. I'm not a big fan of not having covers on the relay, but having it in the firewall does mean it's not gonna get wet. That does not mean it's smooth sailing. Sailing, though. All this means is we have a place for the catch can to sit. We still need to figure out routing. Which brings me to my next topic. This catch can is going to collect that moisture and sludge, but that may make you wonder. Where is it going? We have kind of two options. The kit provides everything you would need in order to route that directly back into the oil pan. So in theory, you would never have to drain it. That would be perfect if what we were catching was purely oil. I absolutely do not want the sludge that's going into our intake path to go into the oil pan. The goal is to get that out of the car. So I'm setting it up in a way that we'll just be able to take a cap off the end of that silicone hose and drain it. With that figured out, we were back to testing the mounting location and seeing how we could get these hoses to actually work with this car. Since we're using the same mounting location as the original Mark IV platform this was designed for, the hose exiting the valve cover is gonna work just as intended. The other one, however, is gonna be a bit more of a stretch. So I took some time to play around with it. This hose has simply a 90 degree bend. On the platform this hose was designed for, this hose fits by routing directly over here. That's not where it needs to go on the 225. On the 225, it needs to go down here. And that leads me to our next issue. Since the silicone hose was originally formed with only a 90 degree bend, if we bend it anymore, it's completely kinked and shut at the top. So while it's long enough, it's not gonna work. We're gonna need to think a bit outside the box. Maybe this was all for naught. Maybe it's not gonna work. Maybe the only way to get this to work is with a Frankenstein combination of many hoses. And at that point, why bother? Or maybe the hose we've needed has been staring at us this entire time and is ironically part of this car to begin with. Do you remember what I always say about how you'll never regret having a cheap set of eBay hoses for your car? Well, eBay hoses coming in clutch again. Turns out the only additional hose that you need to make this kit fit with hardly any issue is another 225 hose, the large one exiting the charge pipe specifically. That one has a 180 degree bend, and it's the same size as the exit of the catch can, meaning it's coincidentally the perfect shape to get it to point towards the turbo inlet pipe. And furthermore, the outlet of this hose is exactly the right size to insert the 034 hose, so we don't even need an additional extension. We already have it. We just need to get the length right. It's kind of cool and ironic just how well this hose actually works for this. The bend is just sharp enough to clear the chassis stiffening brace, so it's not kinked or compressed whatsoever. And doing it this way, since the catch can was back here, we're even able to still run the intake with zero fitment issues, meaning we're ready to actually mock this up with hose clamps. Trying to get this kit to work with this car was a gamble, but at the end of the day, I love it when a plan comes together.
One big issue that a lot of 1.8 catch cans produce is a severe amount of pressure. You've probably seen the videos of dancing oil caps or projectile dipsticks. By replacing the PCV with a catch can and not venting it anywhere, the pressure has absolutely nowhere to go. That's what that pressure relief pancake valve was there for to begin with. It's basically a check valve. As soon as the difference in pressure between either side of it was great enough, it would open and vent pressure to the intake. This helped reduce the pressure in the valve cover so it wouldn't burst. We aren't going to have that issue with this setup because it is vented. This catch can is effectively just a gravity chamber on the inside. Catch cans aren't really a difficult concept. The air oil mixture enters through the side and is met with the wall of a chamber and due to gravity, it all falls down the can. The outlet is on the top. Solids don't exactly float upwards, but air has no problem. So the oil is effectively caught and the air is allowed to go straight up back through the intake. So we won't have pressure buildup and the oil will have been effectively caught. The only thing that is still up for debate is whether the pressure relief valve has a purpose in this system. Some people would say no and some people would say yes. While I decide that and wait for a new one, I'm not gonna run mine. Mine is too worse for where to run right now. With this setup though, it's incredibly easy to add. All you would do is put it between the black hose that connects to the tip and the red hose that connects to the catch can. Maybe a five minute install. I didn't feel like coming up with a fancy routing for the drain hose. I figured it would be easiest just to cap it and route it near the side of the intake. Then all I would have to do to drain it would be to remove the intake, unzip tie the hose, and put a little can in there to drain everything into. Super easy. Well, uh, it's in the right place. It fits, it's functional, and my idea worked just fine. All you need is that extra hose, the TT225 one, which is kind of ironic. I think all I really want to do to improve this, so long as it works just fine, is find a black version of it. I just used an eBay one because I had it laying around and it saved me in a pinch, but I think to make it look better, it would look good if it was black because the entire PCV system is black and it would fit. Well, it's been a couple days, and I've been driving this car a lot. Do I notice a difference in driving? Well, not at all. And that is a good thing. My idle vacuum is the same. The car boosts just as well. It's got the same amount of pressure in the crankcase. Boost and the diverter valve operate just as they did. I even checked the catch can after a couple days and noticed that it was catching a bit of moisture, which means this was a success. Only time will tell if this will be a long-term benefit though. I need to stack some more miles on the car to see how much we actually catch. Anything though is an improvement over it going back into the intake. I mean, just look at how much sludge was making it through the PRV and into the intake. Absolutely gross. But what's not gross is how this catch can looks. I am honestly stoked with the routing. Once we get a black version of that single red hose, I think it's gonna look seriously good. The black's gonna help it blend in a little bit better, but overall, the routing for this is incredibly clean. And I would honestly highly recommend this setup if you're looking for a catch can for your car. Even though this kit isn't for this car, it works just fine so long as you get that extra hose. This was a super fun and productive experiment, and I'm glad we went through it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, learned something, or want to see more, consider dropping a like and subscribing. It's the best way you can support me. I've got loads in store for the channel, and I hope you're as excited as I am. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.